if we legalize them, what's going to prevent us? Who's going to control the manufacture of these drugs and how dangerous they are? Because the bigger the addict population, the more these drug companies are going to make. These pharmaceutical companies are going to create synthetic and very dangerous drugs to what? To make the, the addict population bigger, to drive bigger profits, okay? The greatest mortality rate of drug abuse right now comes from legal drugs, believe it or not, alcohol and tobacco. They are the biggest reasons, or the, they, they cause the biggest death right now of, of, uh, of overdoses or the, their abuse causes the, the, the biggest mortality rate in this country, okay? Legalization will result in these big pharmaceutical companies selling these drugs. Now, it's the DEA and the FDA's position that they should regulate and control the amount of drugs and the potency of these drugs. And if we don't have the DEA and the FDA controlling the manufacture of these very dangerous drugs, our population is going to, any population is going to triple, the deaths are going to quadruple, and basically legalizing drugs is not going to solve anything because the addicts, okay, and these drugs that they're using cause them to commit criminal acts. And other crimes that they might not commit when they're sober under the influence of the very potent drugs that are going to be produced by these pharmaceutical companies will drive them to commit crimes. So that's not going to solve the, 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 the arrest and crime situation. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we're going to have more problems and we're going to have to put more people in prison than we're doing right now. Hector, which drugs concerns you the most? Very basically, the opiates. Right now, we are in a in a uh, opiate epidemic. Okay. The mortality rate right now is higher than it's ever been, Patrick. We are losing seventy thousand people at an average a year of opiate overdoses, and these are not the cartels. These are our pharmaceutical companies. In in nineteen ninety nine, the DEA and the FDA relaxed their enforcement uh, control of these. Uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies. There was pressure by lobbyists that were for these uh, pharmaceutical companies to Congress. They basically caused the, 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 the DEA and the, and the, and the uh, Food and Drug Administration to lessen the, their enforcement. And therefore, since 1999 to the present, the relaxing of enforcement of, uh, of the production of these drugs has created the drug epidemic that we have now. We are now experiencing the worst drug epidemic in the history of, of, uh, of our country. More so than heroin abuse, more so than meth abuse, even more so than fentanyl. And as these drug companies are permitted, they will create very powerful and synthetic drugs and they're going to push them and sell them to our addict population. So legalizing drugs, to me, is no answer. So, but, but let's, let's stay on that. So uh, let's get specifics. So opioids are legal, though, right? So, I mean, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, some of them I can get legally from the doctors. Can, can, can I jump in for a sure. second? Because I think this is really important. Um, there's two things. I, I don't necessarily disagree with you about the commercialization of the potential for drugs and the commercialization. I mean, we've seen it a little bit already with cannabis, right? But here's the other issue that happened that, you know, I think is really critically important, is what is driving the illicit poison drug supply right now is not opioids. It's the introduction of illicit fentanyl that's coming in because we cut off China and then the Mexican cartels have sent it over. So that's what's causing the overdose death right now. It's polydrug overdose and it's the illicit fentanyl because people don't have a safe supply of drugs. People don't know what's out in the street. And I'm going to blame the DEA a little bit and some of the drug czars because I've written about this extensively. There was a point in time during the Obama administration where they started to crack down on 
alleged pill mill doctors, and I'm not saying that those aren't out there. But what that caused, it was a huge market disruption that we need to understand very clearly. And what it took, it took legitimate pain patients out from getting safe supply prescribed drugs into the illicit market where they were now spending 60 bucks a pop for an Oxycontin pill who recognized, you know what, it's cheaper to get heroin. And so then they started using heroin and then the illicit market supply got poisoned with fentanyl. And so it is not opioids that are driving the overdose death. Yes, they contribute it, but that's not the case. Well, I tend to disagree with you there because most people that are hooked on opiates start by consuming drugs that are prescribed to them medically. What drives these people to the, the abuse of fentanyl, uh, methamphetamines, uh, all these other dangerous drugs, heroin, is the fact that they become addicted, the doctors cut them off, they don't prescribe these drugs to them anymore, and they run to the black market, to the cartels, to get their drugs because the, Because they got cut off from a safe supply because the DEA started enforcing the law in a fashion that drove legitimate pain patients. I, the research, my master's degree is actually in drug policy. It's not, an, it's not a master's in business. All the empirical research in the last few years shows very clearly the, the link between how we constrict, interdiction does not work because we constrict drug supply on one side and it just balloons in another area. What we do is we play a trillion dollar game of whack-a-mole with the drug supply and it's not working. And if we start talking about fiscal issues and about how are we going to really impact and save people's lives, we have to recognize the failures of our current policy. It, we're not winning the war on drugs, Kiki, and I'm tired of losing police officers, including Kiki Camarena, because he got killed when I was a young police officer. I remember his death. I remember it. Is we need to stop sending our cops into areas where we know it's a failure. That, you know, that's, I think, the thing that really concerns me is this lack of, of reflection by our, by our government <clears throat> guys that are willing to just throw the cops out there to solve societal problems that can't be solved the, from know, criminalization. If you enjoyed this short clip, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch the whole thing, click over here.